Now we'll consider how to use an op amp not as a, uh, an amplifier with negative feedback but uh, as a switch or a uh, trigger uh, indicator uh, with, when used with positive feedback. Um, so first consider if we connect the negative input of an op amp to ground like so then the output will just be have the same sign as the input. If, if Vn is greater than zero, then it's greater than V minus. We, impl we amplify that small change by an infinite amount uh, and we get the, the pegged output of V out. And that's illustrated here. For Vn is positive, then we're at the pegged V max of the amp, uh, op amp. Likewise, if it's negative, uh, then uh, we get the, uh, a negative output at the negative maximum. Now, uh, this is fine if, if the voltage is unambiguously positive, then we get a positive output. And if it's unambiguously negative, we get a negative output. But what happens if the voltage just comes down and touches zero? We really don't know if it's going to switch or not. And that's a problem. We can uh, get well-defined behavior if we use positive feedback now remember when we had negative feedback we we took some of the output and fed it to the negative side here we're going to feed it back to the positive side of the input and uh, that gives us positive feedback. Uh, in this case uh, the node A because this is positive feedback it doesn't have to be in this configuration it doesn't have to be a, a zero uh, it's not a virtual zero virtual ground like before, that's because it's positive feedback. There's nothing making it zero. However, interesting behavior does happen when it is zero, in that the output will switch when we go through zero. The output will switch from minus to plus or plus to minus when node A crosses zero, right? Because if node A is less than zero, then V out will be negative. And when A is greater than zero, then V out will be positive. So, if we look at, at this uh, configuration here, uh, Vout uh, will consider first the case where Vout is already in the maximum position and Vn is going towards the negative side. So here we are, uh, we, we have a positive Vmax and Vn is going negative. And when does Va equal zero then? Well, that's just when we have the voltage divider between Vout and Vn. Vout is uh, is the positive side, Vn is the negative side, and when is A zero? Well, A is zero when Vn, uh, when we have the voltage divider equation putting A at zero, and that gives us this equation, Vn minus R1 over R2 Vmax, and that's the, the, we'll call the voltage when the low transition happens. Now, this equation is just like the negative amplifier circuit, and this circuit looks a lot like the negative amplifier circuit, but it's not. This is not a negative amplifier because the voltages are switched, and this is not the same equation because it tells us when the voltage changes, not what the voltage is for V out. Likewise now, if we consider the other case, if, if we're already low and we're going up, when will it change? Well, we have the same equation, except now we want uh, Vn positive, Vmax is negative, and we'll go up, but notice I've removed the sign here because Vmax is a positive number. I started at minus Vmax, so the minus, two minuses sign cancel here, and that's when the high change happens. So notice that if we are negative, we have to go past zero to the positive value uh, to get it to switch, and if we're positive, we have to go past zero negative to get the negative uh, thing. And we have sort of a hysteresis diagram like you might expect from uh, magnetizing a magnet. So now if we look at the behavior, uh, we'll see that we start, we go positive, and we cross V, V, H, so V max goes up. Here I'm assuming we started with a minus V max. We'll go along. Even though we cross VH again, nothing happens until we hit the negative uh, voltage, and then we go low. 
and likewise we go high again, but here now we drop to zero, touching the voltage of zero, nothing happens because we have to go a little bit below that to be low for anything to happen. Like the negative feedback case, uh, uh, will we, w the behavior of the system depends on where we put the input. Before, just now, we had the input on the positive side. Here's the input on the negative side. This gives us an inverted Schmidt trigger. That is, when input is positive, the output will go negative, but it'll still be uh, a, you know, the, the maxed out values of V out. And here we have something that looks very much like a, uh, a positive amplifier circuit, but again, uh, the output it will be plus or minus the maximum value. So uh, now, in this case, the output will change when Vc uh, is the same as Vn. When Vn crosses Vc, uh, then the output will change from plus to minus. So we can go through the same sort of analysis we did for the non-inverted Schmidt trigger. Uh, and the analysis, again, uses the fact that this is a voltage divider. Uh, so uh, Vc is V out times the voltage divider, R2 over R1 plus R2, as shown here. And that's what Vc is. And, uh, and V out will be either plus or minus the maximum. Uh, so we'll, we'll cross to the low value if we're, uh, so say we start out uh, with Vmax positive, V uh, in lower than Vmax, uh, or sorry, we should start with V in high, Vmax low, and going down, and we cross VL, so uh, we, we have a negative Vmax as our input, we take the value here, and we set that equal to what Vn is at the change, and we get this value. And likewise, when we go up, uh, we just change the minus sign, and it shows you where the high and low uh, transitions are. Now, when we go uh, past Vh, uh, if we start at high, we go low. Uh, when we pass Vl, we were low and we go high. And likewise, we go on, and every much is, everything is pretty much the same, except w when we go up and when we go down has changed. So previously, uh, our examples had um, a hysteresis kind of curve where the center of the hysteresis is at zero uh, because we were always comparing to zero. Now I'm going to show you how to make, move that comparison, at least in the inverted Schmidt trigger. And we do that by changing the comparison point. Rather than then making this point zero, we make it somewhere between Vmax and, and minus Vmax. Uh, so we just use the node method on this node. Uh, I1 plus I2 coming in, uh, or I1 and IF coming in, I2 going out. Uh, we plug in Vmax minus Vc over R1, uh, V out minus Vc over RF, Vc minus Vmax over R2. And then when V out is Vmax, then uh, Vc is, is, at, is the high value that we want. And when V out is minus Vmax, then Vc is the low value. So uh, we, we say here, uh, if we have Vmax as the high case, uh, then we put in Vh here. We replace Vc with Vh, and we have this equation for the high side, and then we can solve that. We multiply through by R1, and pull out all the Vh, so that's this term, and then pull out the Vh over here, and Vmax over there, and then divide by Vmax, uh, divide by this coefficient of Vh, and we find Vh in terms of Vmax as this somewhat complicated expression. It's not that complicated, note it's just ratios of resistances. And we do the same kind of analysis with V low, and we get this equation almost exactly the same. Notice the only difference is this minus sign. Uh, so 
we've gone to the case now, it's inverted, and we've moved this box from being centered around here to off to the side like that. Uh, so, uh, how do you pick R1 and R2 together? So, actually, we want to solve for the ratio of R1 uh, over RF and R1 over R2 in, uh, in these expressions, uh, and that is shown here. But in fact, there's a mistake in this, uh, so let me uh, cross it out here. Uh, it's not V max here, it should be V sub H. So uh, if you know where you want to set your uh, uh, levels, then you can calculate the ratio of the resistors that you need.